Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right, he's cleaning my glasses. Um, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can read, study, and minister your word with accuracy, with uh, the ability for people to hear clearly and to understand and uh, receive the word. And Father, we thank you that's exactly what will take place today. And Father, we also thank you um, that as pastor ministers to the people in Statesville, all the people there, um, we know there's lots of ministers, that traveling ministers that are in there uh, at times just on a at home base for a few days. Father, we thank you that he will be able to minister to them and to share your good news and message with them, Father, that they'll be able to go out empowered to reach more people. Father, we thank you for the effect that we can have on this area of our country. And not only this area, but Father, that the word that we preach here reaches into the uttermost parts of the earth. And we're thankful for that. We don't count it lightly. Father, we see the plan and your hand upon what we're doing. And we thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn with me, if you will, and if we need a title for this, it's uh, Know Who You Are Fighting. All right. We're ready to fight this morning? Amen. Yes, amen. amen. Well, we're going to know who we are fighting. Because, you know, if you don't know who you're fighting, you don't know something about them, then it's hard to win sometimes. Because you, you get outsmarted or whatever. So, if you'll turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. And in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, I need to turn there. Starting with um, verse, uh, verse 11. Actually, I printed it in Amplified. Yeah, here we go. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be, be able to successfully stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the dispositions, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor. And we're going to stop here for a minute. We'll, we're going to go over the armor later on. But right now I want to concentrate on this. But before we get there, I want to talk just a minute about David and Goliath. In, uh, what is that, in 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, um, David and Goliath were in the battle. And the people who surrounded David, those people, you know, they were like uh, thinking, this is not going to work out. Why do you think you can do this, little David? You know, you don't, you don't even have armor. All you are is a, what, what was he? He was just, just a shepherd boy, you know? He, 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 in their eyes, could not handle this Goliath. I think um, some studying I was doing, Goliath was uh, nine feet, nine inches tall. And I think they said the armor that he wore weighed about uh, close to 800 pounds. Can you imagine how strong and fierce this guy was? 
Can you imagine having to carry around 800 pounds? And I know when, um, what is his name that was killed in action? Um, Jacob. When Jacob came to visit here a few times, he brought his heavy vest that they have to wear with all this stuff in it. And he gave it to um, Shannon and some of the other kids at that time to try it on. And they put it on and they slumped down, you know, because it's so heavy. It's so heavy. But here this guy, he's so tough and strong. He can carry 800 pounds of armor around. And David is going to take him on. Yeah, David's going to take him on. David believed that he could take him out. No one else thought they, they could do it. Much less David, you know. But David knew who he was fighting because he knew who his, where his strength came from. He knew that his strength came from the Lord. And, you know, people, he, uh, let me get, I'm trying to get ahead of myself. Oh, here we go. And so let me see if I can find it. And, and uh, Saul clothed David with his armor. See, they're trying to help him out. They clothed, this is in 1 Samuel 17, 30, probably about 37, 38. Clothed him with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And, the, and David girded his sword over his armor. Then he tried to go, but he could not, for he was not used to it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I'm not used to them. And David took them off. Then he took his staff, which he was used to, in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, in his pouch, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. He took what he was used to using, you know? But when the Philistine came and drew near to David, the man who bore the shield going before him, and when the Philistine looked around and saw David, he scorned and despised him, for he was but an adolescent with a healthy reddish color and a fair face. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you should come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give you flesh to the birds of the air and beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the ranks of Israel, whom you have defiled. David knew where his power came from. David knew that he could beat anybody. You know, he had killed animals by the power of God. He knew he could take on this big guy. It was no problem for him and his God. Amen? Amen. All that laying the groundwork for us now going back to Ephesians 6. And I want to talk a few minutes, and this may get a little uh, too teachy. I apologize if it does, because I, I like to teach, but here we go. We're going to read this. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice how... Paul begins this scripture. He says, for we wrestle. This word wrestle comes from the Greek word pele. And I'm not a Greek scholar, so I probably didn't pronounce that right. But it comes from the Greek word pele. And it refers to struggling, wrestling, or hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Okay? So we wrestle not with flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but what do we wrestle against? Principalities, powers, and we're going to get into all that. But this word pele is um, a word that they, the Greek actually used to, um, part of it, to actually name 
a place that's famous in, uh, with the Greeks called a, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, a palestra? Palestra? Anybody know? Palestra? Palestra? Anyway, it was the house of combat sports years ago, you know? It was the place where they did uh, three different kinds of sports. And these sports were, oh, they were bloody. They were, when, the first one, you know, it was just a bloody boxing match. And they would actually have gloves that had nails and things attached to it. So when you finished, you were a bloody mess. And then the second one was a wrestling match. The second one was um, where they actually uh, attacked each other and wrestled. Like, kind, not nearly like we do today in sports, in schools with wrestling. Much more vicious. And then the third type of combat sport was actually the one that this place got its name from. And that was you fight to kill. It was all over. You, by the... The third one, the third sport, somebody left dead, <laughs> carried away dead, <laughs> you know. And so, anyway, all that to say that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Our fight is not in the flesh, okay? Our fight is not in the flesh. Let me get to my next place here. Um. The devil does not follow a rule book. Did you know that? And this third type of fighting that they did, you know, it was to kill. That's, that's what the devil's plan is. The Bible tells us in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes what? To steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to kill and destroy and steal from us things in life, things... Uh, all kinds of things, anything that would bring us down, cause us to quit, cause us to give up, cause us not to minister the gospel. The devil is after that. He wants to stop us. And then I want to point out, secondly, in this scripture, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Notice that word against keeps getting used over and over. In the Bible, in many places, you see when... God has wanted to emphasize something. He doesn't just say it once in a passage. He says it more than once. Or a person's name. Think about uh, Moses. Moses. Moses, you know. It was several times it was said. Or Saul. Saul. Or Samuel. It was three times. Samuel. Samuel. Three times. So there was an emphasis and here, the emphasis is on against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against. That word against, let me find my place here. Um, give me, bear with me a minute. That word against here means a face-to-face -face encounter. It is actually the same root word as the word that we see in John 1.1 1, 1, where it talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. That word with there is that same root word face-to-face. So very close, face to face, you know. And so when we are fighting the enemy, we must know what we are battling. We must know what we're fighting. And so I want to look at these four against, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness. I want to talk about them just a minute. We're going to get to the fun, exciting stuff again here in a minute, but we've got to lay down this groundwork here. It tells us here that um, against principalities. That word principalities, I wrote it down somewhere. Where did I write it down? Principalities, here we go. 
principalities is taken from the root word arcus, and it means um, individuals who hold the highest, loftiest positions of rank and authority. Remember um, when Jesus defeated the devil, what did it say? What did it say? He, it talked about it, defeated principalities and powers. Yeah, so principalities was like the reigning, ruling, demonic power, okay? This isn't going to be some demonology sermon, so bear with me here. But um, we need to know who we're fighting, okay? So here are principalities. It's individuals who hold the highest, loftiest positions of ranks. Remember we read a few minutes ago from, um, what did we read from? We read, and we talked about the rank. It, here we go. It was from 1 Samuel. And, it's, and he said, you come to me with a sword and spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the ranks of Israel. God has an army, but the devil has an army too. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Principalities are the, the ruling creatures over his kingdom, the devil's kingdom. And you know, if you don't know who you're fighting, you are not going to win a battle. And I've heard people actually say, come on now, you know there's no devil. <laughs> and I think to myself, what is wrong with you? You think there's no devil. You have lost the battle already, honey. Because we are in a battle. We are in a battle. And we are winners in this battle. But we must know who we're battling. We must know that enemy and what he, the, the things that he has under his sleeve. The second, um, against powers. That word powers is from the word ex, exousia, and it denotes delegated authority. So, so the first one's principalities, they're like the big guys, you know, the presidents or the, you know, the big guys in the, in the army, the leader, and then the people under them, the, the generals and everything. And then there's the powers. Those are the delegated authority. Those are people, uh, demon spirits, that have received delegated authority from Satan. Okay? So the, the second group, they use their delegated authority to carry out all manner of evil and wickedness. Okay? So this third one here we see is against rulers of the darkness of this world. And the word there is cosmocrateros. I know I gave that a little bit of a Spanish sling to it, but well, what can I say? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's Greek, and it says it's a compound word. And in other words, it, it, it means, uh, the fir first part of it means order or arrangement. And then the second part means raw power. You know, you've heard they've got raw talent. You know, it's, it's like they've got a lot of exuberance. They're excited. They're full of energy. They're full of strength. But they're still learning how to use it all, you know. And so, so these rulers of darkness of the world denote that they have raw power that's been harnessed and put into some kind of order. So they're kind of, the, these demons are working under the order of the higher-ups to go and do this and go and do that. Go aggravate that person today. Or go send that person to aggravate them. Or, you know, using things and situations and people and, and all those things to try to bring people down. That's the devil. Because the devil does what? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And then... This last one, spiritual, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This denotes, it comes from the word paneros, and it's used to depict something that is bad, 
vile, vicious, and malignant. That sounds like some terms we've heard before, doesn't it? Devil. The devil steals. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But as Christians, we have no power shortage. As Christians, we have given, been given authority. Why? Because Jesus won that authority. Amen? We have power over all of these levels of demonic activity. But you know, if you're ignorant of the devil's devices, if you are ignorant, if you think there's no devil, or this couldn't be something the devil's doing, the devil will keep you dumb and stupid. Oh, forgive me for saying that. But he'll keep you dumb and stupid, and he'll just wreak havoc in your life. That's why we must know who we are fighting. We must know that he's been defeated. You know, he'll come and tell you he can do all these great things. But if you know that you know that you know what the word of God says, then all these great things he, him and his demons say they can do, it cannot be done to you. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's read um, the rest of that chapter of um, Ephesians 6, verses uh, 10 through 17. Actually, we're going to just read the whole thing again, and I'm reading from the Amplified. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him, Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may, may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotis, uh, despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And I'm sad to say that the evil day of danger comes and tries to come to each of us. Yeah. Like Brother Hagen used to say, you're not going to walk through this life on a flowery beds of ease. Attacks come. But we have the power to overcome these attacks. We have get, been given authority to take authority over the enemy in these attacks. Amen? So therefore, put on the complete armor so that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on that evil day. How many of you have ever faced an evil day? Yeah, I have. I've faced an evil day. And you've got to be able to keep standing when you feel like you've done all to stand, continue standing. And having done all, the crisis demands to stand and firmly in your place, stand there for, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. Why do you need all that? Why do you need to be, have all that in right standing with God? Because, you know, um, there, there's, uh, where's that scripture? Um, Anyway, on one of these 14 pages, I have it. Might take me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> oh, I have it somewhere. But anyway, um, oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Romans 6, 7, Romans 6, verses 6, 7, and 11 all talk about the fact that we've been crucified. Our life has been crucified, and we reckon ourselves to be dead to sin on a daily basis. A majority of demonic attacks against us will never produce anything of serious consequence if we're living a crucified life. Things we don't even know, where the devil sent some, some demonic whatever attack, and oh, we got to go back home. They know blah, blah, blah. You know, they know about this, and so we can't attack them there. And then another attack. You know, you got to get almost, you got to get almost where you can imagine a cartoon and see all this happening. You know what I'm saying? Where, where you, this demonic activity, because it is going on. It is going on. The de demons are being sent out to attack. They're being given orders from the top. The principalities and the powers ruling over are telling it to go and do this to this one, go and do that one to that one. And, and it's those that know who they're fighting, those who know the enemy and they're aware there's a scripture in the word that talks about us being, uh, being aware of his devices and knowing his attacks and having understanding of them. I lost me now where it is, but anyway, it, you know, it, 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 it's necessary that we know and be aware. And let's see, where was I reading? And, and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Like I said, you got, you got to think, you know, if you think there's no devil, phew, why do you think the Word talks about all this? The Word is, it tells us to be aware so that we can fight this battle, so that we can win in this life, so we can walk victorious, and, and we can quench his flaming missiles. And the helmet of salvation, and you got to make sure that helmet's on straight. I, when I think about helmet, it reminds me, I've stayed on track really good so far, but I think about, I'm reminded of softball days. And I'm reminded of my girls playing softball. And I'm reminded of Shannon being the catcher. And she's all dressed in this catcher's uh, uh, equipment, you know. She's got everything on for this catching. And she's got on this helmet or whatever you call it. You call it a helmet? Yeah, she's got on this helmet. And she's this little bitty scrawny little thing, you know. She's not big as anything. And so she's back there trying to catch, and, you know, they throw the ball, and she's over here, and it's like every one she has to run after. Why? Because her helmet didn't fit right. And every time she'd lean over to put her hand down to get ready for the pitch to come, the helmet would fall over her eyes or one of her eyes because it didn't fit right. But they had provided the equipment, you know. And so, so she's like this, and she's here straightening her hat and trying to catch the ball. And it was so much fun to watch. <laughs> we had the best time just sitting in the stands laughing at her and just enjoying it. But you've got to make sure that your helmet of salvation is on right and it fits snug. And it doesn't fall down and block your view or whatever. It's got to be straight. The sword that the Spirit yields, which is the Word of God. And then listen, this last thing, so important. So important. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert, watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints. God wants us to be aware of the battle that we are fighting 
be aware of the enemy that we are facing, and he also wants us to know that we know that we know that we know what the Word of God says concerning the enemy and concerning the battle that we have. Because the battle is ours. We have already won. Okay? We've already won. So when the enemy comes, like a flood, you know, throwing things, throwing everything, you know, you, you have to, at a certain point, just sit back and go, is that all you've got? <laughs> you're kidding me, you know? He just throws and throws and punches and punches things your way. But when you know what the Word says, and when you know the power and the authority that you walk in as a believer, when you know who you are, and how do you know who you are, and how do you know the power? You find out from the Word. You stay in the Word. You keep the Word in you. You keep the Word before you. You keep the word. When things come, when things attack, you've still got to stay in the word. And you've got to remind yourself. You've got to be reminded of who you are in Christ. And what you have in Christ. And what you can do in Christ. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of a quote. Mark Hankins uses it a lot. But it's Abraham Lincoln's quote. Let me see if I can get it straight here. And it says something like, The struggle, the struggle that you're in today is not altogether for today, but it is for a bright future. The battle that you're in today, the thing that you're in today, the attacks that are coming, it's just preparing you in your victory for walking in a bright future. Because when that attack comes, you are aware of how to overcome that attack. So then, when that one tries again, piece of cake, you know? And then, when the next thing comes, and the next thing, because you become aware of who you are, what you have in Christ, what you can do in Christ, where you can go in Christ, and all that he has for you in Christ, and you walk in victory over every attack of the enemy. So we've got to know who we're fighting, and we've got to know who we are in Jesus, what has been won for us. Amen? Amen? There's nothing... Nothing too big for our God. Absolutely nothing. There is no attack. There's no, there's no sickness. There's no, no disease. There's no calamity. There's nothing that our God has not given us the ability to overcome through Jesus overcoming and destroying the works of the enemy. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that it has been sown on fertile hearts. And Father, we thank you because of that. People will rise up and take their stand. They'll rise up and take that place that place that you've called them to for this hour, for this time. Father, I thank you that they'll walk in victory, that they'll walk overcoming, fully clothed with the armor of God and ready to do battle again when that battle is over. I thank you for that. Father, oh, Siba ha. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that we can go in your word and we can see who we are, what we have. We can see what you've provided. We can see the power and the strength that we can walk in because of Jesus. And, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for opening the eyes 
opening the spirit eyes. I thank you, Father, that they see things differently. And Father, I thank you that they walk in a place that they haven't walked in here to before. I thank you, Father, for that. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.